Hey, how's it going? My name is John Paul and I run the blog Pementor.com. In this video, we'll talk about gross settlement and net settlement. First, we'll look at the definition of the term settlement according to the Bank of International Settlement. That will lay the foundation to understand the two next topics, gross settlement and net, net settlement. Settlement involves the movement of funds, but the processes to carry out gross and net settlement are different. After watching this video, you will be able to understand and explain the main differences easily. So let's begin with the definition of settlement. What is settlement? The BIS defines settlement as an act thus discharges obligations in respect of funds or securities transfers between two or more parties. Simply stated, settlement is the funds transfer that is performed by one party to fulfill its obligation towards the counterparty in a financial operation. Settlements consist in paying a debt. As stated in the definition, Settlement can happen between two parties, that's the case after bilateral clearing, or between more parties, as is the case after multilateral clearing. There are two types of settlements, gross settlement and net settlement. Let's consider gross settlement first. In a gross settlement system, the settlement of funds transfer occurs individually after each payment transaction is processed. So every time a transaction is processed, a fund transfer is carried out. There is no clearing and no netting of amounts. If the money cannot move, then the related transaction cannot be processed. Banks generally use this type of system to exchange urgent transfers or large amounts transfers. In fact, Banks do that in the so-called RTGS systems. In RTGS, we have real-time in addition to gross settlement. Real-time means that funds transfer happens right away if funds are available on the debtor account. Gross settlement means that transactions are settled on a one-to-one -one basis. These are other words to say the same thing as above. In addition, in an RTGS system, when a funds transfer is made between two accounts, it becomes final and irrevocable immediately after the transfer is made. The risk of default is therefore eliminated. We said in videos about clearing that moving funds every time a transaction is processed is not very efficient. But there is a risk not to move funds right away because it is not sure that the party that owes money will have the funds later to pay the counterparty. RTGS systems are used to eliminate that risk that is called default risk. An RTGS system is a critical infrastructure in a country's economy. It is operated by the central bank directly or indirectly and interconnects all the participant banks to facilitate fast transfers of funds among them. Since the central bank plays the function of banks of banks as overseer of the banking system in a country or region, the solvency of banks and the banking system as a whole is a very important topic to the central bank. Everywhere in the world, real-time gross settlement systems are operated by central banks. This picture shows a central bank that operates an RTGS system to which many banks are connected. For example, it can be the European Central Bank that operates Target 2, or the Federal Reserve in the United States of America that operates the Fed wire system, or RICS Bank that operates the RICS system in Sweden, and so on. 
a transfer of 27 million euro, a pretty high amount between bank A and bank C is illustrated in the picture. All the banks, as I said, have an account with the central bank. Bank A sends the instruction to the ATGS system. The central bank checks if bank A has sufficient funds on its account to execute the fund transfer. If yes, the transfer is carried out instantaneously. Bank A account is debited and bank C account is credited. In case there is no sufficient funds on the account of bank A, the payment will go to a waiting or pending status and will be executed later when funds become available. Now, let's consider net settlement. Net settlement can be split in three main steps. They are, first, the transaction exchange, second, the multilateral clearing or netting, and third, the settlement. In the first step, transactions are exchange among participants without transfers of funds. This can last few hours, one day or several days, depending on the type of transactions. After the transaction exchanges, we move to the second step, the multilateral clearing or netting. In the second step, the obligations are netted among all the participants and the multilateral and the multilateral net settlement positions are calculated. The net settlement position is the sum of amounts of all the transfers a participant has received during a certain period of time, less the value of transfers made by that participants to all other participants. If the sum is positive, the participants is in a multilateral net credit position. It is also said the position is long. And if the sum is negative, the participant is in a multilateral net debit position. It is also said that the position is short. Once the positions are known, the process can move to the third step, the settlement. Banks with debit positions credit the net settlement system's account. This is the account of the clearing system with the central bank. After receiving funds from all participants with net debit positions, the querying system or net settlement system credits the accounts of banks with credit positions. This is a slide that was presented in the previous video about multilateral clearing. It is similar to the slide we saw before with the ATGS system, but here we have a new entity in the middle the clearing system, which takes care of implementing the multilateral clearing mechanism. In net settlement, the central bank is not involved in transaction exchange and multilateral netting. It comes into play for the settlement that happens in central bank ATGS system after the multilateral clearing. To get more information about this slide, please uh, watch the video about multilateral clearing. In summary, here are the main characteristics of ATGS and net settlements. In real-time gross settlement, funds are transferred every time a transaction is processed, so on a one-to-one -one basis. In a net settlement system, transactions are exchanged without transfer of funds. The multilateral netting is performed in a net settlement, while in a real-time gross settlement, there is no netting of amount. In a net settlement, the funds are moved after the multilateral netting, while in a real-time gross settlement, they are moved instantaneous, instantaneously. And finally, in a real-time gross settlement system, the default risk is eliminated. That's the main reason why central banks use ATGS system. They cannot afford the risk of default. In the net settlement system, there is a risk of default because a participant may be unable to make the required payments on its debt obligations after the multilateral netting. That's the end of this presentation about gross and net settlements. If you have any question, you can post a comment below the video. If you found this presentation useful, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel. 
You can also go to Pementor.com and subscribe to the newsletter. You will then receive regular updates about articles and videos. See you soon on the channel.